this time on Pole Barn Garage. I bring back the rescued plow truck Chevy Rusty pile from Kevin with Junkyard Digs uh, that you could have seen on his channel, and you likely did. And uh, we bring her back home to Kansas City, and I guess we'll tear into it a little bit and see what I have to work with here, which is not a lot. But as you saw on his channel, we got it running, moving, drove it through a snow drift. I think it's worth fixing, so uh, let's see what we can do with it. We have to put this on my trailer. It stuck It stuck at like 3,000 RPM, and my yes. trailer is very ramp-shaped, so it might be kind of fun. But... I don't know how this could go wrong. No, no way. That's it for my place. Let's load this up. It's your problem now. <sighs> Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, buddy. He's lined up for the jump. Evil Knievel's gonna try to clear the long box. Can he? Oh, he gave up. That's an appropriate speed for that thing, finally. Oh, it gave up again. Tried to kill you one last yeah, time. Oh God, I have. I've escaped death multiple times. I can't come to Iowa. Have a good time with us. Tried to kill me with alcohol, bottle rockets, a tractor. God, I <laughs> barely escaped with my life here, people. I don't recommend it. It's a good time though. It was fun. <laughs> well, shoot. Let's get you loaded up, sir. Awesome. Thanks for all your help. Enjoy your truck. Yes, I will for a little while. For a little while. <laughs> Oh man, that was probably the most entertaining thing I have seen. My poor truck. Definitely all year for 2023. That's top oh, of the list, obviously. Yeah, that's, a, that's a high bar. Being January 2nd. It was up there. It was on the trailer. And then it went all the way back to where it started. I was just trying to go for neutral. Nope, reverse. Okay, I'll, I'll get the winch out. Yeah. That's probably safer, but hey, it'll clear though. Yeah, we tested that six times. <laughs> The hardest thing about this is your park has turned into reverse, which now I understand why that just happened. Yeah. I'll there was honest. no parking pole to depend on. Right. <laughs> I was really trying to park and it was really backwards. <laughs> Easy dozer up to the ramp, so we're going to winch it on. <laughs> Couple things for context here is like we just said, park is reverse, uh, and the carburetor for whatever reason just holds like three grand <laughs> exclusively. <laughs> so, and thankfully, I had joined a, the Flyers Club, he had a pair of flyers that <laughs> saved the day, really wrangle her in. <laughs> that almost was violent, almost, yeah, no, it definitely wasn't violent. I don't know what we're talking about, no, was almost was violent. Smooth. I would hate to know what you think violent is. <laughs> well, sir, you should tune in more often. <laughs> There she is, ready to head back to Kansas City. Even installed the pickup topper. Just a couple of square bodies heading down the highway. Uh, that damn camper shell's still there. I wish that thing would blow out, but anyway, we got about two hours left to get back home. Just gonna keep on trucking, and I'll pick this up probably tomorrow, because uh, after three days of hanging out with them, ooh, I'm tired. Well, it's officially the next day. Well, we got a little daylight left after I got off work. Let's see if we can get this sucker off the trailer. However, we saw how it went on the trailer. That might work for getting it off and straight into the pond, trees, cars, whatever. I'm thinking I might work on that carburetor a little bit before we actually go through with that. Got that tire aired back up here. And I think we ought to at least try to make it idle normal-ish. Well, yeah, we've got a quadra junk on here that just wants to live at 3,000 RPM. And I don't really know or care why. Uh, 
I would just like it to not be here anymore. I either work on it on the trailer, potentially fall off and kill myself, or try to drive it off the trailer, work on it on the ground, and potentially drive off and kill myself. You know, rock in a hard place. I come over here with a pocket full of tools, and thankfully, Kevin equipped me with a set of pliers. So that's pretty much all you ever need. I learned that over the weekend. And if you uh, really watch everything on the channel, you'll remember this turd. And if you don't, I don't know, maybe I ought to send you over to it. It's a pretty good video. Nobody watched. Uh, I think it's got a uh, spread bore adapter and a carb on it. Yes, sir. Sure does. I'm going to take that back. I need it more than it does right now. Street Demon. Uh, it's a pretty good carb, really. And mine. Yeah, I better take this, too. Yeah. Take these studs, because we'll probably need them. Let's see if the power of the pliers can succeed once again. Oh, wow. I think I need a cape or something now. Got the uh, quadra junk off of there. And we got our new studs in. And now we just got to put this stupid adapter plate on here that I, I really kind of hate. But you know what? It's a product of necessity for the moment. I and mean, you can just see how that's probably not going to feed the front cylinders very well. And that's why I don't like these things. But that said, I've ran them a lot and never had a single issue. Plop our street demon on. And there we go. Look at that. That's a performance engine now, boy. Carbs installed. Everything's hooked up. Let's see if the old truck will fire up for us as good as it did before. It's starting to rain and she don't got no uh, park. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. getting dark so i'm gonna go put the trailer away clean the shop out try to get it pulled in there maybe we get started working on it tomorrow what so, are you complaining about now i'm soaked in water well it's 32 degrees out shut up anyway the shop complaining about you don't pay me enough for this shit i don't pay you at all what the f am i working anyway the shop floor is clean <laughs> Welcome to your new home for a while. Look at all this Iowa mud that's all over this damn thing on our freshly cleaned floor. Probably should have like washed it before I brought it in here, I guess. Not that it's really going to matter. 90% of this truck is going to wind up on the ground as soon as I start touching it. It is so rusty. Now that we got it in here, we can really walk around and show you the beauty that is the 76 Chevy Stepside K10 sport truck. She's got a set of these aftermarket wagon wheels. They're aluminum. Those are really cool. Got to clean those up. Obviously the wheels are the only thing we should be concerned about. None of the Swiss cheese on it. That door doesn't open. Re rear fenders are, are bad. The, the tailgate's bad. That bedside's pretty bad. That bedside's okay. Uh, this fender is the bad side, if there is one. Um, uh, the steps are bad. The floors, um, the floors are gone. Uh, this it's got the you know, walk through cab. Um, um, I mean, at least there's not. Oh wait, what is that? A silver dollar? It is. Huh. I'll be damned. Thank you. That's my pay for the day. <laughs> hey, windows are all foggy. Somebody's been having a good time in here. Yeah, the dash isn't in bad. The seat really isn't too bad either. Yeah, the fenders are bad, and the doors are bad. Uh, the hood is okay-ish, possibly salvageable. I mean, a little bit of here, throw a bug shield over it, it's fine. The grill's bad. We need to rob that snowplow mount off, Kevin. 1979, silver dollar. 
Or is that a gold dollar? It's silver. Is it silver? That's pretty cool. What do you guys think about silver dollar Chevy? You like that? You like that? I like it. Okay. It might be the silver dollar Chevy. I'll do it if we find more. Although there's not a lot of floor left, so I'm not really confident about that. Oh, that's a that's a welcome mat. That is a welcome mat out of a house. <laughs> huh. It's a silver dollar Chevy. No kidding, another silver dollar? <laughs> yeah, she's a silver dollar Chevy, all right. And car wash tokens. I don't think they use that very Here, much. You can have this. I'm good. It's covered in rat shit. Thanks. Oh, thank there you. There you go. Yeah. A little tip for you. Well, that is your pay for the day. That silver dollar might be worth five dollars. It might be. <laughs> there is some good things here, and the internet has already declared that this truck is unrestorable, so of course I'm going to restore it. Don't just look at the exterior panels and the rust when you're looking at something to restore. Look at the good things. The windshield's good, I think. The side glass is good. The sliding back window is good. It's got a nice set of mag wheels on it already. The electrical seems to work in the truck. Headlights work. The interior's not that bad. It's all complete. The engine's solid. It runs good. The frame, it looks good, at least at a glance. I think we've got a builder on our hands here. And I know it's kind of putting the van off a little bit, but the reason I'm not jumping right into the van build is because I want to do like both vans side by side to pull all the big block stuff out, put it in the other van. And it's still pretty cold out, and we need to wait probably two, three months on that. So boom, winter project. Another silver dollar? Yeah, and another quickie time. Oh man, we ever find that car wash? Another 79, he must have got a roll of 79s. Hey, Kevin gave me the truck for free. I'm money ahead now. True. Okay, this silver dollar pay. Chevy. There's your pay for the day. Yeah, that's not bad pay for a couple hours maybe. Yeah, 10 they bucks. Could, they might be worth more than that, I don't know. Well, we're back out here today and let's get some real work done to this thing. Really, just for now, I have a bunch of parts on order coming in to do the brakes and stuff like that so we can actually make some headway on this thing. But in the meantime, I've got an oil change for it because me and Kevin filled it with used oil. <laughs> it's still got like a 30 year old oil filter on it. It might need one of those. Also, I need to remove the snow plow mount right here and all the associated wiring because Kevin needs that back. Considering the only reason he bought the truck was for the snow plow that was on the truck. I want to clean it out and try to get this passenger door open. It's stuck tighter than Fort Knox. This thing, since sitting in here, has developed a strange aroma of almost entirely feces. I mean, how? There's like no truck left in here to retain said aroma, yet it stinks. I'm gonna start with the snow plow mount because I'm a... These things right here, these are freaking shin busters, man. I... <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've racked my damn ankle on that, and it hurts bad. How does this thing come off? Looks like we got some brackets homemade up there on the frame. Those are never going to come off. Oh, this looks like it'll come off fairly easily. It was protected by the plow. <sighs> oh, good. Nylocks, my favorite. What I like to do when I don't know how something comes apart is pretty much just start removing things until it falls apart and or Components that I didn't necessarily want to fall apart fall apart. That happens a lot. Big old honking thing off here. Shoot, we're gonna gain half a second on our quarter mile time just by getting rid of that. See, it's a sport truck after all. Oh, I think I got like two more. Both, maybe? I don't know. Well, that one looks really hard to get to. Why would you do that? Wow, they really have made this uh, impossible to get to. I uh, have to get my ear impacted out. It's got a little more ass than this thing does. I'm stuck. Uh-oh. Somebody called me. Call 911. Oh. Wait. Really? I am actually... Oh. oh God. I'm actually stuck. Are you... Oh. Hey, any time you don't got to cut a bolt off, that's a victory in my book. Okay. Any time you're ready to fall off, Fine by me. Woo! Yowza! Boy, oh, you're a... I can't get it out. Are you kidding me? What in the meth is going on here? The old trailer park installation it's got going on. Um, it don't come out in one piece. However, I do think these arms unbolt 
individually. So before I go hacking this up and ruining it for Kevin, which I am 100% willing to do, I think if I just unbolt this one, this one will probably come out, but I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I, oh, oh. What? Come on now. Man, this is a big old chunk of metal, man. What now? Out of here. Goodbye. You're not a plow truck anymore. I know, it's hard to understand. Let's uh, test out my deadlift abilities. Oh my god! <laughs> well, that sucked. Well, to remove the electrical system of this plow is pretty much like a winch or a PTO, anything like that. So it's got a solenoid over here on the fender well. It's got a couple of relays over there, which I actually think are probably for the lights on the plow. And then there's two switches on the dash. I can't promise I'm going to get this all out in usable form, but i do my damnedest because, you know, that's what you do for friends, right? Chop, 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 chop. Probably has to pull the grill out of this, too. Thankfully, it's got the quick-release installation on it where you just flip these and the whole thing falls out. Pretty convenient. Chevy to do that. Yeah, they're always thinking of the customer. There we go. Yeah. Just like that. Just stuff zip tied all over the place. Big heavy cables and, and there's some window screen in here. What is all this? I guess this is probably switches or no, this is lights. We got some doing to do here. I mean, what in the name of God is all this stuff? It's in the headlight harness. I mean, I'm not feeling good here. It, why? How many wires could it possibly need? I think my favorite part of anything is just, you know, yeah, ripping stuff out of it. Well, looky there. A free wrench. <laughs> you know, between the silver dollars and this wrench, I am almost money ahead on a free truck. Almost, not quite. Well, there you go, Kevin. One big old rat's nest. All yours, bud. That really cleaned up the wiring in here, actually. Most of the butchery was that. So I think we gotta repair our headlight harness. But other than that, well, actually, no, we don't. We just plug it right back in. Huh. Notice one thing. Not sure if you can see that, but that is a sticker. She's got one new spring in it, at least. Well, newer. The other one probably rotted off. Yeah, this one's a lot crustier. <laughs> Yeah. Oh well, I'll take one. Oh my god, that drain plug looks like it's rotted clean off. Please don't break off the plug in the pan. Car and driver oil filter. I've never even heard of that. That's alarmingly easy. Ew. <laughs> it's blacker than my soul. Yeah, it smells like pure gasoline too. We did fill it with used oil that Kevin had laid around, so you know, it's pretty good stuff. Oh, goodness, it did. The thing full of oil generally isn't quite that bad. Oh, bear. No, yeah, dang it, my freshly cleaned floor. Man, this oil stinks. What is wrong with this thing? Blorp. 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 Whoa, hey, please, come on. Yeah, you just drain. Come on. No. Now, go ahead and fill her up. I mean, flavor we got today is, you know, cheap 1040. You know why? Because it's oil and it all comes out of the ground. And, uh, you know, you throw some zinc additive in pretty much anything and it'll work just fine in a flat tap of motor. Because, again, it all comes out of the ground. Oh, yeah. The good stuff. Liquid gold. All right, now that I put about half of that in, I'm gonna use a trick that I 100% stole from another YouTuber that you will know and probably comment about below. So I'll just own it right now. Yeah, I stole it. Use about half of this jug. Take your goop, or zinc additive in this case, STP. It has ZDDP in it. Is it enough? I don't know. But, I mean, it has it, so it's gotta be something, right? Anyway, just... Pour the, the, the zinc stuff, Ugh. pour the zinc stuff back into your jug of oil, 
and then put the lid back on the jug shake and bake you know it kind of helps it all flow down when it's cold like this especially shake and bake baby shake and bite and now that the goo is mixed in now we can install the, the goo and the oil oh it's extra gooey now undo our fuel system here so i can try to get this door open that's going to be objective number one here is to, you know just get the door open and then we're going to clean out the inside of this, see what treasures are inside of it. Who knows? Maybe there's a million dollars. Yeah, then we just go buy another truck. Here. It's full custom right here. I don't know. Yeah, I think she's... Hi. It's not locked. There's not a lot of door left here. I guess I'll pull the door panel off. Now I can really beat on it. Well, you know, these are invaluable. This is a, well, it is a snap-on actually, but I think I got it at a swap meet. And you can use these to pop off GM door handles pretty easily. Ah, there we go. And of course the clip went ding gone. Really want to save the door panel because these door panels are kind of expensive. The later truck door panels, like old blue, they're not so bad, but these round eye ones with the they got kind of fancier door panels in them and they 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 fetch some money. Let's see if I can't remove this the quick and easy way. Ah, I got everything but the screw. <laughs> now this should come off. But then ew. Oh on a rat nest. Ooh, ooh, ooh. It sure looks like a white door panel, doesn't it? Nope, it's red. <laughs> it's the original door panel out of this. Scottsdale door panel, too. You know, because it's got the the wood. The only thing I could really think to do is just hose this down. It's so rusty in there. It's just froze. Uh, a lot of times, you can access the door striker through a latch and, you know, just unscrew the striker and then the door will come open. Uh, but these don't appear to allow you to do that. I'm just going to hose it all down, let it sit. It is trying to move, so maybe we get lucky enough that it'll just pop once, and then we can just take the door off. Let's just... Oh, yeah, somewhere in here. What's it even stuck on? The latch is frozen. Barely hanging on. Hmm. Easy now. Wow. Yeah, that's how you open a door. Every like, time. Like, it never, it kind of unlatched like halfway yeah that's pretty bad now the door actually like opens and shuts okay i mean the body line's way off that's really just hinge pins i think so now that we can get both doors open though what do you say we clean this thing out yeah now if you find any gold ingots in there don't touch them they could be dangerous okay you know yeah give them right to me Oh. God. Uh, gloves? Yeah. Yeah, let's see what we've got in here. So I have a, uh, what is clearly a uh, beading rod here. Oh. Don't spill it. There's a lot of poop in here. Oh my gosh, there's so much poop. Hey, there's the window crank clip. Oh. Couldn't find that again if I tried. What's this? Oh, a rusty coat hanger. That's... That's nice. It's too bad the RPO sheet is gone from the glove box. That would have told us if it was a sport for sure. But, well, now it's a portable glove box. Oh, what do we got under? Oh my god. Oh. Oh my. Pretty sure that's a turd. It's like a rock. It's 
It's a turd. That's not a turd. It's petrified. Petrified turd. What do you got in the ashtray here? You got a dime, penny, quarter, bunch of washers. Mm -hmm. More washers, more change. Looks like a uh, light smoker. Throw all of our treasures in the treasure cup. Mm -hmm. Washers, dimes, change. You know, all that adds up. Well, I guess I'll start soaking the seat bolts so that we might have some chance of removing it without destroying everything. Yeah, that's never going to happen. Boy, that was lucky. Yeah. Wait. Just came out. Wait. This bolt is so rotten, it's gone from a 9 16 to, uh, I don't know, maybe a half? Maybe vice grips? Yep, it's permanent plier sized. Ugh. Maybe it's cutoff wheel sized. Yeah, I think it is. Woo, I got it. Nice. Okay. All right. Good thing is there's no floor over here, so it'll just fall right out. Yeah. Piece of cake. Easy. Easy. Holy cow. It's a lot. I hope the RPO sheet's in there somewhere. That would be nice. Uh. Oh. Okay, so the uh, seat track. Uh, yeah, it probably needs a little help. The seat itself is in pretty good shape. Yeah. You definitely could just recover that. Yeah. Easy. These are like the easiest seat to reupholster ever. Oh. We're gonna probably be gutting the old farm truck here uh, for that truck as we move forward here, including these badass floor mats. Look at that, look at these. I knew I kept those for a reason. Oh yeah. I'd like to try to rip out the transfer case shifter of this, because uh, that's obviously messed up in the black truck. You can take off the doghouse of these things and get right down to the transfer case. Yeah, I don't like this. Little of that, you know, I have to right out. What, what nice weather we're having. There. And we'll keep that shifter. There we go. Yeah. Hit scoop. Yeah. Okay. There's one of those. Yeah. That's a that is a, a nail, I think, holding that on. Mm -hmm. Ugh. That was a pain. I'm not looking forward to doing that on the new one. <laughs> I think a little cleaning and yeah, that actually will, should help our uh, our pride and joy black truck. Sorry, farm truck. You've been a good truck, but you're kind of a piece of crap. Oh, it is basically front wheel drive now. It is front wheel drive now, and that's the only reason this is happening, guys, because you know me, I don't let anything go to waste. Uh, I wasn't on camera, but I was trying to pull something out of the woods and <laughs> it went kutunk and now it's front wheel drive. So, and I don't know what happened. I haven't really looked into it because I care about that much. I, I think her days are done. She's been a good one. I've had this thing for like four years, three, four years now. And it's exactly the same. Yeah, it's, it's been a good truck. It starts every time. But there's our steering column to fix that ignition switch. Uh, there's a lot of stuff here we could use and we'll salvage and at least put it to some good use, you know. Yeah. It's better than just trashing it, I guess. Well, I guess I'll dig in. <laughs> I, I'm gonna guess there's not a lot of value in, you know, in here. Yeah, so we just hit it with a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, I guess so. Satisfying. This is... Apparently, just too extreme for my uh, vacuum cleaner, so we'll just uh, we'll go with the old school vacuum cleaner here. Oh. There's two floor pans right there. <laughs> the cap brace is still here on this side. That's good. It is good. That's, that's very important. That's a hard piece to put in. The rest of this is not that hard to put in. Ain't that bad. 
<laughs> I mean, it ain't good. Don't get me wrong. I have literally done worse. About the same over here. It's a good thing you can just walk into the cab, though. Yeah. It really makes it easier. We ripping all of it out? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, maybe I'll zip off that uh, transfer case shifter plate thing. Yeah. That way. Yeah, yeah, right. Like, the screws are going to come out of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's probably salvageable. You could probably clean that up and reuse it. Sorry guys, I kind of took a hit at work and I, I'm a little, I'm feeling my age a little bit. Uh, so <laughs> a little bit slow. Oh, hey, wait, wait, money. Oh. I like how this is red. I don't think you can buy those anymore. That's another indicator that this might have been a sport truck. We'll show you in a second here once we get the rest of this cleaned out, but. I don't see anything here that I think is like, whoa, this can't be fixed. Other yeah. than the uh, bottom part of the kick panel here, that's that's kind of a problem, but they do reproduce a section of this. I just don't know if it's enough of it. This is like average man restoration. You know, if you're like a super duper perfectionist who wants me to spend like five years trying to make this truck immaculate, well, you're in the wrong spot. But if you're a regular guy who wants to see someone build something like everybody else does, uh, you're right here. Right onto my fresh shop floor, as always, completely destroyed. Within two seconds of me doing anything! So guys, this really isn't that bad. You got good floor braces. The cab mount plate is still here. We can work off of that, okay? It's not going to be immaculate, but it should be just fine. Uh, the hardest part is just going to be squaring the cab back up. You know, we'll have to throw a jack under the door and kind of spread it back open and then put our floor mounts in. But I've never seen one that that wasn't gone. I mean, that's not unusual. That happens all the time. Old Blue, insert picture, is was just as bad as this. It, hell, maybe worse. And uh, it's fine. And guess what? I didn't weld a single panel into that truck. What I did is every single panel is flanged and then JB welded epoxied into place. It's been six years, hasn't rusted out yet. So, uh, you know, take that for what you will. But, uh, yeah, I'm telling you, you don't, you don't, you don't got to weld everything and be Mr. Super Perfectionist. It, it doesn't matter. Nobody knows. Everyone says, well, it's a really clean truck, thinking it's original. Uh, so, you know, fake it till you okay, make it. Okay, so since I'm kind of beat up, I don't want to crawl in there. So, uh, you can crawl in there. Okay. And what we need to do, this is the original throttle cable bracket. We need to take that homemade thing off of there and put this on. So you're gonna have to, you'll need a half inch wrench, I think. Take out those back two bolts, put this in place, unclip the throttle linkage and just clip it into this instead. And it should be just fine. But I, I think I'll remove this. This is a cruise control add on here. I'll take that off so it's not in your way. It shouldn't be too hard, I just put them on. See the little tabs? Just squeeze the tabs. Don't squeeze too hard, you'll break it. But, and then just gently push that square out the back. There. Got okay. it? Yeah. There you go. Right. Not too bad. Yeah, this is some homemade job. We'll keep it around though. Might be useful. So glad you're in there doing that. There's no way this is actually a different size. Is it really? It Seems like something I would do. All right, JD got our throttle linkage fixed up right. And I think that we'll probably be able to uh, have full throttle now, all unleash the power of the small block, you know, or something. Anyhow, I have this Corvette air cleaner that I thought would be kind of fitting on the uh, sport truck, you know? I think GM should have put a dual snorkel air cleaner on there, so let's see what that looks like. There, it looks nice perfect. Factory looking. Yeah. Then we'll uh, trim our custom made carb stud here to fit. Well, let's fire it up. And, I don't know. See what it idles like and sounds like now, and maybe get some of that fresh oil pumped through it because I haven't started it yet. That's 
a lot better. It yeah, it's a lot better than before. She's a runner, man. Cool. It, it started right up. Of course it did. Well, we were also pumping it. She's an old square body. You don't got no choice. All it knows what to do is just run and, and run and run and run and run until one day the earth is absorbed by the sun as it expands six billion years from now. It's all square bodies know how to do. It's just keep going and going and going. You cannot beat a small block Chevy, and I am not a big Chevy guy really, but small block Chevy is, it doesn't get any easier than that. Any more idiot proof and bulletproof. I just happened to find a brand new rotor, and what I suspect is a set of pre-organized small block Chevy spark plugs. I think they are. I'm not 100% certain on that. Anyway, let's pop that cap off and at least see what it looks like inside of there. We can throw that new rotor in just for kicks. You know, go ahead and complete our tune-up for now. It needs a couple of valve cover gaskets still, but I don't see any reason to touch that motor. It sounds good. We clamber on up in here again for the bazillionth time. For really no good reason either. Is first off, let's just see what this cap looks like. Okay, rotor's completely burned away. I don't know, the cap's not quite as bad as I thought it was, but it is definitely worn. A very clear wear line on it. Whereas this other cap I got looks pretty new to me. Now the coil button is also wore out. That should really be sticking out a little further. Uh, that rotor is definitely worn. It's not even even. I can tell that, so we'll change that out real quick. That's an easy one. Go ahead and pop the rotor off, and I'm just gonna give that a mechanical advance a little, a little wiggle in, and just you know make sure that it's, it's functional. Wow, that is one of the better feeling mechanical advances. I've ran into as of late. There ain't nothing to worry about there. Why do I have all this crap? Because I'm a hoarder, and that's what I do. It's gonna rip the old plug wires off of here. And there's stupid plug wire retaining ring thing. I hate those things. I marked where number one is on the cap with a sharpie. And that's all you need to know to put your wires back, of course, is just where one is. And then it's one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two clockwise on a Chevy. And so you can see a little bit better in there that there's a lumps that it's actually melted the brass here as it's spinning. You know, so what it's spinning this way. So it's boom hitting and then kind of dragging, hitting, dragging. And it's actually starting to drag the material around. So that's a bad cap. You know, if you get some misfires and stuff at idle, that'll do it for sure. It didn't do it on this because well it's small block Chevy, it doesn't care. This is the cap and coil out of the truck. It's got like a brand new coil. We're gonna remove this other one I had laying around that's leaking its precious goo, which is, I believe, highly carcinogenic. The button just installs like this, and that's what actually makes your contact to the rotor, so it's pretty important. This rubber insulating washer goes around the spring and Sits down in there, and a coil sits on top of that. Nothing to it. And there we go. One brand new cap. Uh, and that combined with the new spark plugs that Kevin tossed in it with me. Uh, and again, I implore you, go check out that video if you haven't, uh, on Junkyard Digs. And I can throw away this extra crap, which means I have room for more crap! I think I'm ready to throw the plugs on, or plug wires on. Uh, got our new cap on. It's installed, ready to go. These are straight boot plug wires, which is okay if you're running manifolds on your Chevy. Uh, if you're running headers, you ain't gonna be able to use these. But we can, for now, and I think these came off of my Corvette, and then I put the long tubes on it and the side pipes. I had to put 90 degree spark plug wires on. So you can see right here, <laughs> these wires are ancient. Uh, probably from about the time that the truck was parked, I guess. You can't even read them. But if I flex them, they crack, break apart, and they kind of hold their shape, you know? That ain't no good. You're going to get all kinds of random stuff going on because of that. This set of plugs, plug wires. Same with this little tiny guy here. 
I don't know what this is for. I've tried it on every single cylinder. You know, your shortest ones are always number eight, number seven on the back. And uh, usually seven is the shortest one, so I left the shortest one for that. And it's a good three inches too short. Um, you know, I don't even think you can strangle someone with this. Useless! Anyway, I went and found another one that was laying on my floor. Sure, it's just great. Grab my keys. Gas. Yeah, I think I ran it dry. Um, <laughs> I forgot to open the vent on the can. <laughs> Oopsie. The next job is going to be rip that uh, this shifter off and the rods and install our new shifter and rods. I'm not uh, totally sure just how wise it is to be removing clearly the only solid part of the entire floor. But that's what I'm doing nonetheless. So I have one over here that's rounded off. Vice grips will get it. If not, I'll cut it off. No, the vice grips did the trick. Be dang. Ah. There we go. A little easier when the seat ain't here. JD's cleaning up the uh, new old shifter here. And you know, basically, I really just want to get like the where the linkages and stuff are in here. Oh, right here. Just clean up that way; it doesn't get all gummy. It didn't really work that good in the truck we pulled it out of either. So, <laughs> but just looking at it, I'm gonna guess it's just filthy. Yeah. It's lubricated. Nope. Got the old shifter out, and she is rusted solid, but maybe salvageable. We'll keep it around just in case. Boom, as my concrete cracks. Uh, now I just gotta try to get these rods off. and They were a real bear on the other truck. I'm sure they will be just as much fun on this. I'm waiting to soak this one rod right here. It just doesn't want to come out. So I got it chilling some penetrating lube. But look what I noticed. The, <laughs> that's the modulator valve and the bracket for it is rotted off of the transmission right there. Look at that. The aluminum, well, it's gone. The aluminum has corroded away. It's, I've never seen anything like that. You're gonna be so amazed by my zip tie genius over here. And that's a zip tie moment for you. It's called the daisy chain. Come check out the daisy chain, JD. Yeah. See, the vacuum modulator is rotted off the side of the transmission. So I simply added four zip ties around the dipstick tube to hold the modulator in place. This is standard procedure. Yeah. This little uh, pivot it has, it's got like 0.1 of an inch sticking out of it right here. And it just won't, <laughs> I can't get it out. Hey, that's incredibly hot for some reason. Wow. Why? Hang on, it's time for pliers. Da, 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 da. This whole truck is just like a deadly obstacle course of tetanus. <laughs> <laughs> Aha! Pliers save the day. Look at this. Oh that little nub right there. Wouldn't get off. That's it. Putting our new, new shifter in. I gotta hook the rods up on the transfer case. Put some new cotter pins in. And uh, I'm sure it'll take way longer than it should. And we'll get right back to you. We just bolted the sucker in here. And it seems to work. There's five positions on the shifter. One, two, neutral. Well, I skipped one, I think. It's kind of sloppy, but it moves freely and it seems like it works. I think the only thing we can really do is just try it, you know? Yeah. And just see if it works. Also, here's why our we lost park right here. This is the shifter rod that comes out of the column. And so what we're going to want to do is just find park and then we'll just have to put a washer and a cotter key in the end of that and that'll fix that problem. You can see the hole that where the cotter key is supposed to go here and it's just plugged full, it probably rotted off. So if we can just snake a drill in there and just zing, you know, drill right through it, that's the way to do it. Works 
like it should. I said yeah. we lube it up a little bit just to help it out. And we should have park. I mean, I don't know for sure. I guess we'll find out when we start it. <laughs> We're just going to top fluids off. We got to put the seat back in it. Once we get her fired up, we'll check the training fluid. I say we go try to drive this sucker okay. on 30 year old dry rotted tires with one brake. I'm going to fix this fan shroud and the tabs are busted off of it. So we'll fix that with a couple of self tappers. Oh, well this one lines right up with the bolt hole. One second, let me get the right bolt for it. Repaired. Mm -hmm. The restoration continues. God. There it is. There. All right, let's All get right. this sucker bolted in. Good thing we never tried to like fix the tracks on it. Mm -mm. So I get to ride with this in my stomach. Obviously this door won't shut since we took a sawzall to the striker and then never did anything about it. I'll uh, show you the daisy chain uh, official ANSI approved zip tie method right now. And see this is a little bit stronger than adding zip ties together and then doing it. This is a little bit stronger than that. And for those really tough jobs, you know, where you really need it to be safe mm -hmm. and secure. Oh, this is kind of a tough job. <laughs> oh, well, this door is going to be exhibiting a significant amount of force. Due to that, we're going to have to really ensure that it is safe. Mm -hmm. And so we will use the daisy chain zip tie method. You'll find this in the national code of stuff. So then you just tie, see, look. It will it's kind fine. of open. No, but it will not all the way open, you see. So we're going to go ahead and fix the floors so it's safe to drive. Mm -hmm. And there we go. Show them. Okay, well, I, yeah. oh, oh, hang on. I, I got finished. Okay, then they're they're done. Okay. There. of a transmission leak and I think it's coming out I don't know they've got this trans cooler routed kind of weird um, they hooked it up the way you're supposed to hook it up which is not how I would have hooked it up it is running through the radiator and I'm wondering if that's if this isn't just puking it sure looks like it's just puking out of one of the rows of the radiator I've now bypassed the radiator entirely I am assuming and that's a big assume we all know what that means. That it was just a core or a row leaking in the radiator and not anything else because it was just a fan blowing it back onto the engine. Uh, so now, I can't believe that's transmission fluid. That is probably the worst transmission fluid I've ever seen in a vehicle that moves. <laughs> <laughs> she might want to filter and flush. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not even good. Nope, don't do that. Then it won't work anymore. <laughs> Me and Kevin already spliced this transmission line back together. It was rotted off on the transmission side. Uh, you could tell that it... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That wasn't very long for this world. Which really inspires confidence in me that the other one is probably perfectly fine. You know when there's something full of oil that just rots away like that? You've got a good vehicle. Okay, well that problem should be solved for now. I ended up just putting a new piece of metal line in and just kind of running it all the way up here. Not pretty, but it works, maybe. Uh, now, I guess I didn't really want to flush it, but I accidentally ended up flushing it, so let's top it back off and maybe try to hit the road. I think we fixed it. Yeah. 
I'm glad it did it here and not on the road. Why does it only go backwards now? Hmm. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. It goes backwards real good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did we do? I mean, why? if it was a transfer case, why would it go backwards but not forwards? I don't know. We need to try to jam it. Maybe it's not all the way engaged. But if it... It doesn't make any sense. It's going in reverse. I mean, maybe it's just dead. Well... On that note, if you're a transmission guy in Kansas City, let me know, because um, I have at least three that need done and I don't want to do them. You know, I'm going to try to drive this around in reverse a bunch and see if something in the valve body's just stuck maybe, and maybe just cycling it will make it work again, because why would it just, I don't know, Stop it doesn't working. whine, nothing weird going on, I don't know. I've been messing with this thing for a minute and the only thing I can figure is that that transmission just decided to die. Uh, I don't understand how anything with the transfer case would have anything to do with that and I've tried every combination of you know low high whatever took the shifter off isolated it just moved the arms like we did up in Iowa nothing and I checked the uh, shifter on the side of the transmission click the arm nothing so I don't know. I don't know. I, I think the transmission died. So that means the farm truck is getting pieced out sooner than later. Hate to see it. So I think in the next episode you'll probably see me ripping this truck apart to pull the transmission out of. Because it does work, but has no park. So hopefully between the two we can use the Paul out of the black truck and just fix the park in this transmission and maybe have a a working transmission for free yeah right that's never gonna work i think that's gonna do it this time on pole barn garage uh if you like what you see make sure you hit that subscribe and like and all that stuff and well tune in uh next time to to bid the farm truck farewell we'll see you guys mm -hmm.